Good morning, Hall viewers. Today we've got Marilyn and Fleur from the British Museum Metals Conservation Department coming up to work with us today. And what they're going to be helping us with is actually grouping different pieces of the hoard that are similar together. So to carry out this process, what we're going to do is get a lot of the material out. And today we're going to be looking for what we're calling ribbed silver panels and pressed decorative silver panels. And we're trying to group all of those together so that we can start to look at them and see if any of the pieces start to fit together to make a bigger object. So here you can see um, Deb, one of our hoard conservators, and Dave, otherwise known as Dr Dave Simmons, our curator here at the museum, and they're looking through some of these pieces um, to appropriate them to the, the correct grouping, whether it's the ridged silver panels or the decorative silver panels. Once a group of um, silver objects with patterns have been brought together, they're placed on a table and then they're re-reviewed to see if any of the patterns actually start to match. The orange raffle tickets you can see with numbers on, we use these to make a clear identification of the accession number of the object. As the objects are so small, we actually need a big number at the moment to be able to identify them so that we can keep an audit trail. We've switched from um, focusing on the patterns to the ridged fluted sections because these will actually start to give us or potentially give us the shape and size and curvature of a helmet. Now Fleur's just going to point out some of the features that she's found for us. Okay, so I'm just, within this little bag, we've got a number of different parts of fluted strip or possibly even some little clips that held it onto something like the helmet. We can see that there are different widths. This piece here, which joins with this piece here, is quite wide, and it has a blank channel here, which is the position where the rivets were placed. So these should be quite easy to join. The other thing to notice is there's a curvature. It's not a straight piece. And this matches this piece. This is also part of this same wider curved fluted strip with the channel which is the locating area for the line of rivet holes. This piece joins to this piece. We don't have this piece here. Very fragmentary fluted strips. The ones on this side fall into two categories. We've got true ends represented by this end here, this end here, and this end here. And you'll note that this one is very clearly sloping, so it must have been positioned in, in a particular place, perhaps on a helmet. But you can see that this is a break, probably a fresh break that's occurred fairly recently. And that has sheared also at about 45 degrees across the end. Under the microscope, the conservator will be able to sort out and separate the true break cages and the uh, manufacturing finished ends of these important little fragments. This little single fragment is held together only by the soil, this reddish-brown soil which appears on either side. And you can see that the stain of the soil is the width of the upper fragment and the rivets no longer survive. This is a very important co-location. It's probably going to be repeated many times in the hundreds of little fragments that we have and it will give us important clues about the form and function of the object on which, to which they were attached. This reproduction helmet is a speculative reconstruction of the many fragments that were left over from the helmet uh, from Mound 1 at Sutton Hoo. So this is a reconstruction replica of what it may originally uh, have resembled. What we're looking for are these areas on an object such as a helmet. And you'll see there are a number of different types. We have the fluted strips that are straight. We also have the ends, which finished about 45 degrees, which might tuck into the corner of something like a hanging cheek piece. And we also have the lines of the rivets holding them on to the helmet popper. 